California is known for its beaches, vibrant cities, and famous landmarks. But beneath this sunny surface, a darker side of life thrives. Hidden in neighborhoods and streets across the state are some of the most dangerous and powerful gangs in America. These groups aren't just names in the headlines. They are part of a complex web of power, fear, and survival that has shaped the streets for decades. From the busy avenues of Los Angeles to the quieter corners of Northern California, these gangs have built empires in places where few would expect. Their stories are not just about chaos. They are about control, influence, and the battle for territory. As we dive into the 10 most dangerous gangs in California, we will uncover the layers of their operations, their origins, and their impact on the communities they inhabit. Number 10. Tiny Rascal Gang The Tiny Rascal Gang, TRG, is one of the most dangerous Cambodian-American street gangs in California, primarily based in Long Beach. TRG was founded in 1981 by Cambodian youth who fled the Cambodian genocide and resettled in Long Beach. These young refugees faced racial tensions and violence from other local gangs, especially the predominantly Latino gangs. One notable event that triggered the formation of TRG involved a fight between a Latino student and a Cambodian student, which ignited a larger conflict between Cambodian youth and Hispanic gangs. Initially formed for self-defense, TRG quickly became involved in organized criminal activities to assert dominance and protect their community. As the gang grew, its members began engaging in more violent and profitable crimes such as extortion, home invasion, robbery, and trafficking of substances and weapons. The gang's reputation for violence escalated during the 1990s when they became involved in a bloody rivalry with the East Side Longos, a Mexican-American gang. This rivalry was exacerbated when the Mexican Mafia placed TRG on a green light hit list, instructing Sureño-affiliated gangs to target TRG members. TRG members became notorious for their willingness to use extreme violence, including shootings and coordinated assaults, to settle disputes. In one particularly gruesome case in Sacramento in 1995, TRG members were involved in a home invasion that resulted in the death of two members of a Vietnamese family. This crime highlighted the gang's reach as members from Portland, Oregon, collaborated with TRG members from California in the attack. Despite the rivalry with Latino gangs, TRG has maintained alliances with other Asian American gangs, most notably the Asian Boys, ABZ, another Cambodian-American gang based in California. Both gangs share common cultural backgrounds and often collaborate in various criminal enterprises, including weapons trafficking. TRG and ABZ have also established connections with the Ghost Shadows, a Chinese gang from New York operating on the West Coast. This alliance facilitated the smuggling of weapons in exchange for services provided by TRG and ABZ members at illegal gambling dens and prostitution rings. The gang's involvement in violent confrontations has remained steady in recent years, and their reputation as one of California's most dangerous gangs persists. For example, in 2015, a TRG member named Emery Thomas Clay was charged with aggravated assault after intentionally running down and killing a man named Haung Lamingen in a gang-related dispute. Such events underscore the gang's willingness to commit extreme acts of violence in pursuit of power and retribution. TRG's main source of income comes from illegal enterprises such as substance sales and weapons distribution. The gang's hierarchical structure allows for coordination across different states, further complicating efforts to dismantle their network. As of 2024, TRG remains active in California, with its stronghold still in Long Beach, California. The 38th Street Gang, one of California's oldest street gangs, traces its roots back to the 1920s, initially forming within Los Angeles Mexican-American communities. Emerging in the midst of cultural and social upheaval, the gang became infamous in the 1940s during the Sleepy Lagoon Human Slaughter Trial. 
This case involved the demise of a young Mexican-American, Jose Diaz, near a popular swimming area in East Los Angeles. Members of the 38th Street Gang were arrested and convicted for the crime, only to have their sentences overturned later. The trial fed into the rise of the Zoot Suit Riots, with members of the 38th Street Gang caught in the crossfire as white servicemen clashed violently with young Mexican-Americans in Los Angeles. The media exaggerated the presence of the gang, associating their attire and defiant image with crime and delinquency, further cementing the gang's reputation in the city. Operating in South Central Los Angeles, the 38th Street Gang quickly gained notoriety for its violent activities, ranging from substance trafficking to assaults. In the late 1980s and 1990s, the gang's involvement in the illicit distribution of illegal substances made their territory a hotbed of criminal activity. Local residents and city officials grew increasingly concerned as buyers flooded the area, prompting the city to close streets in an attempt to curb the flow of traffic. The gang is known to hold alliances with powerful criminal organizations like the Mexican Mafia. The Mexican Mafia routinely employs members of the 38th Street Gang to enforce their orders both within prisons and on the streets. This association grants the 38th Street Gang a level of protection and influence, making them an even more formidable force within the city's gang landscape. Their main rivals include other Hispanic gangs in the area, as well as African-American gangs such as the Bloods and Crips. However, they also share an alliance with the 18th Street Gang, with whom they work closely in their shared opposition to mutual enemies in the gang wars that sweep through South Los Angeles. The 38th Street Gang has maintained a grip on the region's underworld. In February 2011, the FBI led a large-scale operation that resulted in the arrest of 37 suspects tied to the gang. Charges against them included illegal possession of weapons, trafficking, and conspiracy to commit violent acts. The gang also engages in violent conflicts with rivals, often resulting in deadly street battles and targeted attacks that leave the community in fear. Over the years, drive-by incidents and violent confrontations have further cemented their reputation as one of the most dangerous gangs in California. In recent years, as of 2024, the 38th Street Gang continues to be a significant threat to public safety in Los Angeles. They remain heavily involved in illegal trade and territorial disputes, often at odds with law enforcement as authorities work to contain their influence. Number 8. Bloods Gang The Bloods Gang is a predominantly African-American street gang formed in Los Angeles, California in the early 1970s, primarily as a response to the growing power and influence of the Crips. The rivalry between these two gangs remains one of the most notorious and violent in California's gang history. The Bloods are easily identifiable by the red color worn by their members and distinct hand signs, which set them apart from their rivals. What initially started as a small gang to protect members from the Crips quickly grew into a violent and expansive network across California, comprising various subgroups known as sets. While these sets share a common affiliation, they often operate independently with differing codes, operations, and even internal conflicts. The Bloods originated when Sylvester Scott and Benson Owens, two students at Centennial High School in Compton, were attacked by members of the Crips. This violent altercation led Scott to form the Piru Street Boys, the first blood set. Other smaller gangs, victimized by the Crips, soon aligned with the Pyrus, creating what would later become known as the Bloods. As the Crips attacks escalated, these groups banded together under the shared identity of Bloods to protect themselves from their common enemy. During the 1980s, the Bloods grew exponentially, fueled largely by the distribution of illegal substances in Los Angeles. Profits from these criminal enterprises allowed Bloods members to establish their influence in other cities and states. As the gang's wealth and power grew, so did their reputation for ruthlessness. The Bloods' rivalry with the Crips, however, is not their only source of conflict. Blood sets themselves often clash over territory, 
internal power struggles or personal vendettas. A particularly vivid example of internal gang violence occurred in Pasadena. On February 28, 2013, Tyrone English, a 35-year-old man, was targeted and attacked by an assailant who shot him multiple times before fleeing the scene. English was allegedly involved in an internal feud within the Pasadena Denver Lane Bloods, one of the blood sets in California. The investigation into English's shooting eventually led detectives to another unsolved case, this time involving Monty Russell, a Los Angeles resident and former gang member. On August 21, 2015, Russell was ambushed outside a barbershop in Pasadena after getting a haircut. He was shot by an unknown assailant who fled in a gray Dodge Charger. Like English, Russell's death was linked to an internal blood feud. Despite efforts to crack down on gang violence, the Bloods continue to pose a significant threat in California, with both law enforcement and community members often caught in the crossfire. And today, the Bloods remain active across California. While law enforcement has made significant arrests over the years, the gang's loosely connected sets make it difficult to dismantle their entire network. Number 7. Crips Gang The Crips are one of the most notorious street gangs in California, with a long history that spans over five decades. Founded in 1969 in Los Angeles by Raymond Washington and Stanley Tookie Williams, the gang was originally formed to provide protection against other street gangs in South Central Los Angeles. However, the Crips quickly evolved into one of the largest gang organizations in the United States, expanding into a vast network of affiliated sets throughout California. By the mid-1970s, these various sets, although loosely connected, began engaging in violent conflicts with one another, as well as with rival gangs like the Bloods. The Crips are known for wearing blue, a color that has symbolized their affiliation since the early 1970s. The arrival of certain illicit substances in Los Angeles created a lucrative trade for the Crips, providing them with the financial power needed to grow. This increase in revenue came with increased violence as the gang protected its territory and expanded its criminal activities. The Crips have long been entangled in a bitter rivalry with the Bloods a street gang that emerged in the early 1970s in response to Crip violence. This feud has resulted in decades of violent confrontations, with some of the most notable incidents occurring in the neighborhoods of South Los Angeles. While the Crips are notorious for their violent activities, their influence extends beyond physical confrontations. Members are also known to participate in car thefts and other forms of organized crime. One notable tactic involves pressuring non-gang-affiliated dealers to pay a form of protection fee, which has only added to the group's control over many communities. The Crips' criminal influence also extends into the prison system as well. Over the years, an alliance was formed between the Crips and the Folk Nation, particularly within prisons. This alliance, known as the Eight Ball, was created to protect members from other rival prison gangs, particularly the Bloods, but it remains primarily effective within prison walls and has a lesser impact on the streets. One of the most high-profile incidents linked to the Crips was the tragic killing of rapper and philanthropist Nipsey Hussle in 2019. Nipsey, a member of the Roland Sixties set of the Crips, was fatally shot outside his Marathon clothing store in the Crenshaw neighborhood by Eric Holder Jr., a Crips member. Today, the Crips remain a potent force in California, continuing their illicit activities. Number 6. 18th Street Gang The 18th Street Gang, often called Barrio 18 or Mara 18, originated in Los Angeles during the 1960s. Initially formed by Mexican-American and Central American youths who were excluded from other Hispanic gangs, the group quickly established itself as a formidable force in California. The gang operates primarily in Southern California, with a decentralized structure that includes factions like the Sureños and revolutionaries, who control different territories. Leadership is loosely organized, but certain individuals known as palabreros play critical roles in overseeing operations. One of the gang's main rivals is MS-13, 
The rivalry has contributed to high levels of violence in urban areas, particularly in California, where these two groups often compete for control. The 18th Street Gang's power is further solidified by its alliance with the Mexican Mafia, a powerful criminal organization. This partnership has allowed the gang to expand its reach, offering protection and resources in exchange for loyalty. The gang is an essential contributor to the Mexican Mafia's prison economy, strengthening its grip on street-level crime across California. Substance trafficking remains their primary source of income, Though the gang is also heavily involved in human trafficking, weapon smuggling, extortion, and auto theft. The gang's members are notorious for carrying out violent crimes such as robbery, assault, and targeted attacks against rivals or those who refuse to comply with their demands. And today, the 18th Street Gang remains a significant threat in California, adapting to law enforcement crackdowns and maintaining its presence through a network of street-level operations. Number five, Sureños Gang. The Sureños, also known as Southern United Raza, Sur 13 or Sureños X3, are a network of loosely affiliated gangs that have maintained a strong presence in California for decades. The gang is notable for its alignment with the Mexican Mafia. While Sureño gangs operate under the broader umbrella of the Mexican Mafia, they are not a single entity, but rather a collection of street gangs that pay tribute to the Mexican Mafia while competing with each other on the streets. The gang was formed largely as a response to economic hardships and racial prejudice faced by Mexican Americans, and this solidified into the formation of two distinct groups, the Sureños, Southerners, and the Norteños, Northerners. While Sureños are loyal to the Mexican Mafia, the Norteños are aligned with the rival Nuestra Familia prison gang. Sureño gangs are involved in various criminal enterprises, including substance trafficking, human trafficking, homicide, carjacking, home invasions, robbery, and extortion. Their primary sources of income are the retail-level distribution of illicit substances. The gang maintains a sophisticated network both inside and outside the prison system, allowing them to continue their criminal operations even while incarcerated. The gang's structure is decentralized, making it difficult for law enforcement to dismantle. Sureño factions often engage in territorial disputes not only with rival gangs like the Norteños, but also among themselves. For example, in 2008, two rival Sureño gangs fought over control of Southwest Community Park in Santa Rosa, California, leading to the shooting death of an 18-year-old man. These internal rivalries are common, but they are set aside when members are incarcerated, where the Mexican Mafia maintains strict control over its Sureño foot soldiers. The Sureño's long-standing feud with the Norteños has resulted in numerous violent clashes. Number four, the Aryan Brotherhood a prison gang that originated in California, is a prime example of the violent and criminal underbelly of the state's correctional system. Formed in the 1960s at San Quentin State Prison, the gang emerged during a period when many U.S. prisons were segregated by race. As prisons began to desegregate, inmates organized themselves into gangs based on racial lines. The Aryan Brotherhood was among these groups, initially forming to protect white inmates and assert dominance within the prison system. Their animosity towards rival groups, such as the Black Guerrilla family and La Nuestra Familia, quickly escalated into violent confrontations. In the early 1970s, the Aryan Brotherhood attempted to align with Charles Manson and his followers, but the alliance was short-lived. The gang took issue with the murder of Sharon Tate, leading to a rift with the Manson family. The Brotherhood's internal power struggles and alliances further complicated their criminal activities. By the mid-1970s, their actions had sparked a race war within California's prisons, prompting officials to segregate rival gangs into different facilities. This isolation allowed the Aryan Brotherhood to solidify its influence and expand its criminal enterprises. By the 1980s, the Aryan Brotherhood was linked to a series of violent incidents. Notably, in 1981, 
Members Thomas Silverstein and Clayton Fountain were involved in the brutal killing of an inmate, Robert Chappelle, and later murdered Raymond Smith in a particularly savage attack. This violence extended beyond prison walls. In 1983, the gang orchestrated the deaths of two correctional officers, Merle Klutz and Robert Hoffman, using sophisticated tactics to bypass security and commit these acts. The 1990s saw a shift in the Aryan Brotherhood's focus from racially motivated violence to more traditional organized crime activities, including substance trafficking, extortion, and prostitution. Their operations became so sophisticated that they managed to exert significant influence both inside and outside prison walls, surpassing even the American Mafia in terms of power within the prison system. They built alliances with smaller gangs like the Nazi Lowriders and Public Enemy No. 1, and even established a working relationship with the Mexican Mafia due to their mutual hostility towards the Black Guerrilla family. Number 3. Mexican Mafia the Mexican Mafia, also known as La Emi, was founded in 1957 within the California prison system. Despite its name, the Mexican Mafia originated entirely within the United States and has no direct ties to Mexico. Over the years, it has grown into one of the most powerful and feared criminal organizations in California, particularly within the prison system. The Mexican Mafia exerts considerable control over Hispanic street gangs across Southern California, including the infamous MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang. This control is maintained through a system of intimidation and forced loyalty, where gang members are expected to follow orders from high-ranking Mexican Mafia leaders, known as Emeros, or Face Death. La Imi's history traces back to the dual vocational institution in Tracy, California, where a group of 13 Hispanic gang members from various Los Angeles neighborhoods formed the gang to protect themselves from other racial groups in prison. One of its founders, Luis Huero Buf Flores, played a key role in uniting rivals from different neighborhoods under the Mexican Mafia banner, creating a network of violence and loyalty that still exists today. The group quickly became known for its brutal tactics enforcing its control over the black market within prisons through extortion, substance trafficking, and human slaughter. The gang's power expanded far beyond prison walls as it established a sophisticated network of criminal operations across California. One of the most notorious incidents of the Mexican Mafia's ruthlessness occurred in 1971, when Alfonso Pachi Alvarez was murdered for collecting substance profits without passing them up to the organization's leadership. This crime highlighted the gang's iron grip on the streets, with leaders like Joe Pegleg Morgan, who was of Croatian descent but was a key figure in the organization, using violence to maintain discipline and control. The Mexican Mafia has long-standing alliances and rivalries that shape its influence within and outside of prison. Its strongest alliance is with the Aryan Brotherhood. Their gang rivals include Nuestra Familia and the Black Guerrilla family. The animosity between La Emi and these groups has led to violent power struggles. Number 2. MS-13 Gang In Los Angeles, the Mara Salvatrucha, better known as MS-13, emerged in the 1980s with a unique origin story. Initially formed to shield Salvadoran immigrants from other gangs in the city, MS-13 swiftly evolved from a protective group into a formidable criminal enterprise. By the 1990s, their influence extended beyond Los Angeles, partly due to the deportation of numerous members to El Salvador after the Salvadoran Civil War ended, spreading their reach to Central America and beyond. As of 2024, MS-13 maintains a significant presence in California, with estimates placing their membership around several thousand individuals. Their influence is particularly felt in Los Angeles, where they are known for their brutal enforcement of their code and their expansive criminal network. Notable figures in the gang include Erwin Hugo Drupi Garcia, who allegedly oversees operations in Pasadena, Jesse Grinch Perez, head of the Adams Click in Southwest Los Angeles, and Jorge Alberto Ramos, also known as Poison, 
who leads the Leeward Grandes in central LA. MS-13's activities are notoriously ruthless. Members are often involved in the illicit trafficking of substances, operating primarily through intimidation and violence. One of the gang's most high-profile rivalries is with the 18th Street Gang. What started as a fleeting alliance in the late 1980s, possibly over a dispute involving a romantic interest, evolved into a fierce enmity marked by cycles of revenge and escalating violence. This conflict has seen both gangs engage in brutal confrontations and territorial disputes, further fueling the violence in affected areas. MS-13's criminal enterprises extend beyond street-level substance sales. They have been implicated in various serious crimes, including violent altercations and extortion schemes. For instance, their initiation rituals often involve extreme violence, such as a beat-in lasting 13 seconds or committing a violent act to be fully accepted into the gang. One stark example of their brutal tactics was revealed in 2017 when MS-13 members allegedly abducted a rival gang member, transported him to a remote area, and murdered him with machetes. This incident was part of a broader pattern of violence, including several other murders that were linked to internal disputes and attempts to assert dominance. Additionally, their operations in California have led to the seizure of large amounts of substances and illegal firearms, underscoring the scope of their criminal activities. The gang's reach and strength remain formidable till today. Number 1. Nuestra Familia Nuestra Familia, NF, Spanish for Our Family, is a highly organized and violent prison gang that originated in Northern California. This criminal organization, primarily made up of Mexican-American, Chicano inmates, has been a dominant force in California's criminal underworld since its inception in 1965 at the Correctional Training Facility in Soledad. The NF was initially formed by Northern Californian inmates to protect themselves from the Mexican Mafia, which largely consisted of Southern Californian prisoners. The rivalry between these two factions has sparked one of the longest-running gang wars in the state's history, with Bakersfield serving as the geographic dividing line. While Nuestra Familia members are distinct from Norteños, the street gang associated with Northern California, many Norteños act as foot soldiers for the NF both inside and outside prison walls. The conflict between Nuestra Familia and the Mexican Mafia began in 1965, when a member of Mexican Mafia stole a pair of shoes from a northerner at the Duell Vocational Institute in Tracy. This small act ignited decades of bloodshed and cemented the NF's mission to combat Mexican Mafia at every turn. Nuestra Familia members were originally focused on protecting their own, but the gang quickly evolved into a violent criminal enterprise involved in substance trafficking, extortion, and manslaughter. The gang's power extends both within and outside prison, with much of their criminal activity being orchestrated from behind bars, particularly from the notorious Pelican Bay State Prison, which serves as the NF's headquarters. One of the most infamous figures in Nuestra Familia's history was Robert Brown Bob Viramontes. A high-ranking member, Viramontes was deeply involved in NF's criminal activities for over two decades before attempting to retire. His termination in 1999, ordered by NF leadership from inside Pelican Bay, illustrates the gang's unforgiving code, blood in, blood out. Despite his attempts to leave the life of crime behind and settle into suburban family life, Viramontes was gunned down in front of his home in Campbell, California, by NF members who were under orders from prison bosses. His death was a result of internal gang politics and power struggles, showcasing the lethal nature of Nuestra Familia's internal hierarchy. Nuestra Familia has also formed alliances with other gangs when it suited their interests. One of their most significant alliances is with the Black Guerrilla family, BGF. This alliance is primarily based on shared enemies, as both gangs oppose the Mexican Mafia and the Aryan Brotherhood. The primary source of income for Nuestra Familia has long been substance trafficking. 
The gang is heavily involved in distributing illegal substances both within prison walls and on the streets of Northern California. They also generate revenue through extortion, demanding taxes from substance dealers and other criminals operating in their territory. Another events of NF's criminal enterprise was revealed in a 2023 federal indictment that charged numerous members with running a major methamphetamine distribution ring and committing violent crimes across Northern California. The indictment followed a multi-agency law enforcement investigation that spanned nearly a year, showcasing the gang's enduring presence in the state's criminal landscape. And today, Nuestra Familia gang remains active and dangerous in California.